Hey everybody, this is Mark with Candace Corals, a good friend of mine who's on the DeSoto City Council, and she is just kind of rolling with me today. We're here in Fort Worth and we are talking about all kinds of cool things, just, you know, video things that she puts on on YouTube. Candace, yeah. how can they find your channel on YouTube? Yeah, so it's Candace Q, and then also on my Facebook page, you can follow it, and then I'll upload the videos on there too. Cool, well awesome. Well, I'll let y'all know a little bit more later. We are headed to Dixie House to get a little bit of coffee and, and chit chat a little bit more, but I'll let y'all later. Oh, if going uh I'll tell you what it would be, a good one would be. Uh, but I may have to like do the lyrics. What's one that I, a rap song that I hum along to? Uh, Biz Marquis. The Vapors. Can you feel it? Nothing can save you because this is the season for catching the vapors. And since I got time, what I'm going to do is tell you how I throughout my crew. You got what I need. And you say she's just a friend. And you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby, you. Dallas. Booker T. What about, how is hard uh, top five? Top five is good. It is good? Okay. Top five is good. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm a barbecue connoisseur. Yeah. Because I've been to like every major barbecue place. And I haven't been more on the Fort Worth side. Mm -hmm. But I will go. Yeah. If I hear they're good. But like on the Dallas side, I've been to all, you know. I'm yeah. right by Bishop Arthur Lockhart's. I do the hard eight. Bishop, uh, the, 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 I think the brisket at Lockhart is maybe the best in the city, or the best in DFW. It's good. That's a, that is a really good dessert place, creme de la creme. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's they. I recognize this area. Yeah, they are so good. Those ladies. Those ladies do a good job. You see where Dixie House is, right? They're on the left. Oh. Is that a mugshot there? 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 They've added a few things here over the years west of I-35. This area like, continues to kind of lose things. And so the top off that opened up east of downtown, that was a big deal. It was the first time anything of significance economic development-wise has come out this way. We have a couple of smaller things, a little golf deal. Um, a little golf school that's pretty prominent out here. Um, but for the most part, yeah, everything is, is west. And so people eat, people play, people uh, spend money. Being able to, to um, have kind of a place, people put that on the side of town. And even a lot of people that come out here to eat, like they don't even live in this world, like they live in Kennedy or this is their route on their way in between the or whatever. And they, and they stop in to kind of get to see some locals and some people that usually don't eat. So, you know, Italy, uh, hot pizza. Hey, Italy, pasta pizza. You doing all right? How you doing, Doc? Yeah, doing good. You all right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Sweet Home Baptist Church. You remember coming by? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who was that, Gina Bivens? Uh, yeah, it was uh, there with Gina, I guess on MLK day. Yeah. Yeah, well, they remember. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's the, that's, she's all, she's all over. Yeah, she's all over. Also, our pastor, old, oldest pastor, number 15, daughters. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I was sure that he was a sweet home. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, everything going all right? Everything going good. That's good. God bless you, man. Yeah, that's good. How's everything in church? Real good. Real good. Take a plate. Yeah, good. Yes, sir. God yeah, be blessed, man. Thank you. All right.
So, um, so it would be nice to have something out here. We can like have, a, yeah, have breakfast and it's really nice. Because like I said, we still have, we normally do everything west of the, are we, are we going to Arlington or North Virginia? It's really kind of sad because it's like a really uh, nice part of the city. We have a lake over here. Uh, but there's just been very little resource wise uh, that has been important over here. We have some good city council members. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no, 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 yeah, and they're really doing a good job. They kind of changed that over here. They really, really in the short time they the council, they worked very hard to kind of turn that. Around. It's hard once the uh, businesses are leaving the community to keep them and then uh, track them on top of that. Right. It's just really tough. Right? Yeah. Thank you. What's this? Strawberry banana, 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 banana cake. This looks so good. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Okay, first question. Are you team iPhone or team Android? Definitely team iPhone. Really? Okay, what's your favorite sports team? Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Uh, what's a website that you visit that now not a lot of people know about or you get a lot of information from? The website that I visit that a lot of people, um, I read Wall Street Journal every day. Every day? Every day. Okay. Um, what is someone interesting that you follow on Twitter or Facebook? I like following on Twitter, Michael Pollan, or Facebook and Twitter, Michael Pollan. Okay, who, who is Michael? Michael Pollan is an author that writes about uh, food. Okay. Yeah. He's just a foodie. Yeah. Type mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Uh, what TV show do you make time to watch? The TV show that I make time to watch, it depends on what, you know, now you can binge watch. So it depends on, like, at the time. Okay. Uh, the TV show that I always make time to watch is Dallas Cowboy Football. The TV show that I'm watching right now is Luke Cage. Okay. Luke Cage. Okay. So you'll be going to see Black Panther when it comes out. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. You'll be there at midnight and you purchase your ticket. You'll Probably be out there. not. But I will be. I will watch it when it first comes <laughs> okay. out. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have a Mac or a PC? I have an iPad. An iPad. Okay. Yes. With, um, the, with the keyboard. The, with the big screen with the keyboard. <laughs> okay. What is the what's your favorite go to drink at Starbucks? My favorite go to drink at Starbucks is white chocolate mocha with no whipped ab almond milk decaf. Woo, that's a lot of okay, that's a lot. Um, what's the last thing that you Googled? The last thing that I Googled was probably um what happened during the shutdown. <laughs> I was trying to find out more information about the the you know what people were saying post government shutdown really yeah. okay black lives matter or all lives matter black lives matter uh, tell me why that's important because black lives matter is telling letting people know that black lives are just as important as other lives it was never about black lives matter more than other lives the people that tried to twist it like that uh in my opinion they were just looking for ways to uh, deflect any sort of guilt that they may have had or, oh. you know, or, or, or what have you. But it was never about black lives mattering more than others. And when people say that that's what black lives matter means, it makes me upset. It was just trying to let people know that black lives matter just as much as other lives. And that some society doesn't somehow understand that all the time. Right. I think it was really that simple. Yeah. yeah. And, and we I, gotta keep saying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite social media platform? I use Facebook out of the most out of any social media you platform. Facebook the most. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you were to run again for us um, at the local level, would you run for a school board or city council? City council. Okay. Um, so Done with the rapid fire questions. Thank okay. you for that. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about this next generation. Talk to me about um, young people who want to run for office. Kind of, you know, what, if we want to get involved, but we're kind of feeling like government is just, it's, it's too political. It's mm -hmm. too much angst. It's, it's not working for everybody. So they check out. What would you tell that person that wants to get involved but not? I would tell people. That A, it's important to get involved because if you don't get involved, other people are going to make the decisions for you. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'll never forget, you know, when everything was happening in Ferguson, Missouri, 
was people were, you know, saying, hey, this town is 60% black, but they only have, they don't have anybody black on the city council. Maybe there was one person. And then they went and checked the voting records and they were like, it's not that people here don't vote because the people there, they were voting in the general election for president. They just weren't voting in the municipal elections, which were held at, at another date other than when people run for, you know, president and governor and senator. And, uh, and you know, they could have had a, a, rep, a mayor, a police chief, a city council that was much more representative of how they thought those entities should be run had people, you know, showed up and been voting the entire time. Very true. And so, I, to me, like, it's hard to really... And I always tell people, protests are great, mm -hmm. and I don't want to, like, take away from anybody's time and effort mm -hmm. and organization that they put into things. But mm -hmm. the bottom line is that if those, if, if those uh, um, you know, rallies and, uh, you know, civil protests uh, and demonstrations aren't followed up by voting, mm -hmm. then it's really not going to really mean much. You know, the news, of course, they're going to come out and cover it because they like that sort of thing mm -hmm. because it helps them with ratings. But if the news comes out and covers your rally and nobody follows up to vote, well, you're still going to have to keep having the same issues. Mm -hmm. And the news will have got their ratings mm -hmm. because they got to come out and see a rally and they got to come out and see, you know, people, uh, you know, talking and people being in, in a demonstration type mode. Right. And so they will have gotten their ratings off of that. Right. Um, and the, uh, and the, 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 but then the city council and the, police department they're going to stay the same right. so the people that you were protesting and uh, holding civil demonstrations uh, trying to raise awareness about they're going to stay in their positions and their jobs and nothing's going to stay the same mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry everything's going to stay the same so nothing's going to change right. so I mean that you have to follow it up with actual voting yeah. and I think that that's the, the, the most important you know thing that young people can understand to... You know, kind of get, like you said, it's hard to get the connection of why that's important. Mm -hmm. It's been, people have been voting for a while, right? And then yeah. some of the things aren't happening in their community, so they disengage. And then, you know, so it seems like if I vote, it'll all, you know, it's the same anyway. So what's, what's the difference? How do we still get people to feel that there is truly a connection and there is truly change happens when you vote? But... <laughs> Trust me, most of the people I talk to in my district, if we have 4% turnout, most people who see me at the Alpersons or Kroger, they tell me something that's broken, I know that they didn't vote for me. Yeah. Just by pure numbers. Yeah. And how do I get them to feel the, this is, the, you got to step it for them. How do right. I get them to feel like this is important? Mm -hmm. And you can make real change happen, but you got to get involved in the process. Yeah. But yeah, I think right. politicians like you, and, you know, we have a responsibility to make it easy for people mm -hmm. to, to feel connected to us. We have a responsibility to make government easier and work for them. Yeah, that's right. And I think a lot of people get in this. You know, and I kind of feel the same way sometimes. Of, hey, the people there aren't representing me because they aren't like me. Right. They didn't come from, come from. They don't have issues like I have issues. So how can they possibly fight for me? Snapchat is a perfect example of a platform that just does not work 
unless you do it yourself. Yeah. It's just not personal. Uh, it needs to be you holding the camera and you telling the story. Every now and then I'll let my staff, I'll give them my Snapchat and let them, uh, you know, like film me from afar just so people can like actually demonstrate and see what I'm doing. But I tell them, hey, I'm about to do this first. Yeah. You know, because it just, it doesn't work otherwise. Yeah. Do you do uh, the Facebook stories and Instagram stories at the top? The little circles? Uh, no, nah, I don't do my own Instagram. Uh, the staff does the Instagram. Yeah. Um, and then what's so funny is that they're all millennials. They're younger than me. Yeah. And I have to actually, like, push them in that more personalized direction. Because they feel like you are elected, so you shouldn't be. Yeah, should, should yeah, be yeah. Honest, yeah, they think that I shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that personalized. They think that all the pictures should be posed. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and we like, want the real. Like, yeah, and I'm I like, see you yeah, yeah. like even on mail do. now, no elected official should be sending out mail <laughs> with posed pictures. All your pictures should be of you listening to other people, uh -huh. or you like, you know, actually like sitting down at a table with other people, uh -huh. or something like that. What's posed pictures? They like standing at a podium or something. No, just like the pictures at uh, like, like a photo shoot. Yeah, when the photographer comes around at the banquet. And he's like, okay, y'all all, all uh, stand together real quick. Take your name tags off, and everybody stand together, like lined up. <laughs> like you should, you should never put those on anything that you mail out, ever. Right. You should never do that. Never all do of that. your pictures should be <laughs> like those. When I was talking with those guys at Dixie House, when yeah. I was talking with that, the waitress, like all your photos should be of you, just Who's like normally that? interacting. Uh, just, just different things I picked up from political consultants over the years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing too, and this is very hard for baby boomers, and e and even some Gen X, even some Gen X, like if you're a older Gen X and you grew up in the, especially black Gen X, and you grew up in the church and different things like that, you should not take pictures and send them out to people in the district with you wearing a tie and a jacket, maybe just a jacket with no tie, but not with a tie <laughs> on. You should not do it. Okay. You absolutely should not do it. It makes you look out of touch. <laughs> uh, you know, we still have members, I'm not kidding you, that will um, show them shopping at the grocery store with their tie on. That's not how, no one thinks that people shop at the grocery store with their tie on. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That's like, not happening. No, it's not. Mm -mm. <laughs> like, that's not how you go shopping. So why are you going to send out a picture of you at the grocery store interacting with constituents with a jacket and tie on. Right. Because nobody really is going to believe that you... And that's what social media is, is authentic. Yeah. Right? It's meant to be yeah. real and, you know, we got post pictures and websites for all the other stuff. Yeah. But your social media is supposed to be about you and, you know, regular people things. And it's so funny too because um, I'm like definitely one of the elected officials that are like always like hey don't take any post pictures of me my staff they'll still do it like don't take any post pictures of me and i'll say hey uh and i'll go stand next to somebody and they'll see them take a picture they're like and they'll stop in the middle of the conversation okay go let's all stand together and i'm like no don't do that. i want candid pictures yeah like, i don't want any pictures of us you know? posed yeah makes sense yeah well i appreciate you congressman thank you for yeah no time. thanks candace and, and uh you know if there's anything that we can do for you or we can support you or yeah thank you i see the work that you're doing i appreciate it we appreciate it and, thank you, you know, uh, just know that we're watching we, we got your back yeah thank you i appreciate that I appreciate good to see you